not how you want to close out the regular season at home. But um, as you, you predicted, this was going to be a tough game. Um, and the game play, you guys can play, but it seemed like they just hit a few more shots when they, they needed to gain some separation. It was chasing most of the night from there. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate you being uh, nice, but the fact of the matter is, is you can't allow people to come into your gym and score 90 points. And uh, we obviously scored 84. 84 is enough to win a basketball game, but you, you, you just can't do it. I mean, we allowed them in the first half to shoot 62% from the three-point line, 52% from the two. So um, you're not locked in defensively um, in the first half if, if you're allowing that to happen. And um, with that being said, the bright side of this is that I thought in the second half, that team that, that fought and scrapped, I thought that team was much more like the team that we had seen throughout the course of the year who was in the hunt for first place. And uh, we need to see that team more often. For whatever reason, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't do that in the first half, but I thought in the second half we did. For a team that's top of the nation and adjusted tempo, you guys only had two fast break points. Or were they doing to slow you all down to, or maybe just not allow opportunities? To you know, I'll, I'll watch the film. I, I'll be very honest with you, and please don't take this the wrong way, guys. How they calculate fast break points just it blows my mind. I don't. I don't understand. To be frank with you, so I, I have a hard time saying that. I think that we had more than two fast break points during the game. But with that being said, um, if you look at this sheet, they have it eleven to two, right? And no matter what the dis the numbers are, the disparity is enough that they were aggressive, and they were better defensively. Therefore, they got out and transition more. And uh, at the end of the day, um, we just weren't we weren't good enough defensively to help that create our offense. Yeah, obviously this is a missed opportunity for you guys to just kind of solidify second place in this conference. It's probably not going to be in the top two at this point. Um, yeah. You get a little bit of help. No, I don't even think mathematically with a little help we can we can be top two. So we have to worry about finishing third or, or fourth and then, you know, go in in three games in three days. Yeah. With that being said, I, I've told you guys from day one, we have enough talent in our locker room um, to win, whether it's one game and two games or three games in three days. We have enough to do it. And uh, the bright side of the second half of tonight was that I thought that that team, um, you know, played more like uh, we were accustomed to. And uh, my, minus the turnovers. I thought that we turned the ball over too much in the second half. But uh, I thought that they played hard. I thought that they were aggressive. And obviously, we were much better on the, on the backboards in the second half than we were in the first half. And, uh, and we got to the free throw line a lot more in the second half than we did the first half. And if the numbers tell you that we played better defense. So. If we can get that team in the second half and then we can add some of the guys back to it, I think we're going to be fine. But um, it starts with practice. And we've got to practice better before we can play better. I don't, I don't believe that you just show up at 7 o'clock when Diddle Arena is packed and uh, you just, you're just you going to perform well if you don't practice well. So it starts tomorrow at 12 noon um, when we practice before we head to Miami. And then uh, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll be the same thing on Friday when we practice again. We've got to practice better so that we prepare to beat Florida International on Saturday, plain and simple. Both of the guys said that they'd like to see this team a whole lot during the conference tournament. Do you echo that statement? I'd like to see all the teams. Like I, I think we can beat any team in the league. So I don't, you know, want to see La Tech versus Sam Houston versus Jacksonville State. I, I think that we have enough talent to win the conference tournament. And uh, I think that if we can have the the great fans that came to the game tonight travel down to Huntsville, I think that that's going to help us. I, I told the guys at the, in in the locker room, I know that they care. I know that they're good people. But at the end of the day, you have to be the best team on the floor, not the best individual collection of talent. And uh, right now, we're not, we're not the best team on the floor. We weren't the best team on Saturday at middle, and we weren't the best team on the floor for sure in the first half tonight. So we've got an opportunity on Saturday night to be the best team on the floor at Florida International, and then we'll have another one against Liberty. And uh, then we'll head to Huntsville, and we'll see what the heck, heck we can do there. Highlight of that second half is Tegan um, hit career high tonight. He put him a little bit down the stretch in that run where you guys tried to almost throw him back. What did you see from him uh, tonight, especially down, down in the middle? 
Well, I, I thought Tegan took what they gave him, right? And uh, they allowed him to get into the paint and allowed him to get towards the rim. And I thought our big guys did a pretty good job sealing for him as he drove the ball to the basket. And then he got fouled, right? And he made his free throws for the most part. So, um, you know, I think he went 10 out of 12. So, you know, Tegan's continuing to improve. And, and whether Tegan is 18 years old and, and somebody's 23 years old that's played games and played minutes, it's the guys that are going to be able to produce it's in practice and on the floor that are going to play. Um, I love each and every one of them, and that's what I told them in, in, in the locker room. But at the end of the day, my job is to put the best five guys on the floor to help Western Kentucky win. And, uh, you know, whether that's – you know, player A on, on Saturday night, and then he doesn't play well tonight, and I got to play the next guy. That's just the way it works. And, you know, man, I give Tegan credit because, you know, he maybe didn't have his best game at middle, um, but he practiced. He was hurt this week, and then he practiced through it. There's a lot of guys that wouldn't have practiced through what he did this week, and he was rewarded tonight with his play. I, I believe that, and you, you, you get rewarded when you. Uh, you know, when you play hard and you do things the right way. And, and you know, as we've got to get some other guys to believe in that as well. Cheating kind of mirrored Isaiah Crawford and that he got in the light of the line, got into the line, kind of balanced out their three point shooting. He was a guy that you guys had trouble stopping, especially early in this game. It, yeah, I mean, I, I thought, I thought, you know, both those guys are good players, and I thought both of them did a good job tonight. We did a much better job um, on Crawford at their place than we did tonight. And uh, their bigs did a much better job on our bigs tonight. We were not effective in the post, and uh, that's very disappointing. There was the shot clock malfunction. What, 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 I don't know <laughs> what other word you used to describe it. How did that affect it? What did they tell you? I, they had the same shot clock malfunction we did. You know, I mean, it's just like Middle Tennessee. It, it, the guy made a mistake, but it shouldn't come down to that. I'm not going to blame um, our shot clock malfunction on, on our loss. Um, the fact of the matter is, is I thought we played pretty good the second half. Shot clock was working in the first half, guys. Um, so that's on us. That's on us. But yeah, for whatever reason, that shot clock worked every day in practice this week. Um, it worked in shoot around today. And uh, for whatever reason, it did not work tonight in the second half. So that's what you, you get, man. You, you, you turn them off, and then they, they announce 10 seconds, and they count it down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's the way it works. That's what we've decided in basketball. La Tech had the same, uh, same issue we did. So. Kind of bench your uh, two fouls at the end of the first half with Brandon out there uh, in that final possession. That yep. worked out. You guys ended up going in seven instead of down ten. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm putting him in on offense, you know. So it, it was uh, we we went two for one. We got the ball with a minute and nine. We went down. We scored. Um, they went down, unfortunately, if I'm not mistaken. They scored, so I called the timeout. We got the last possession of the half. And, uh, you know, I, I typically don't worry about those guys getting in foul trouble on offense. And to Brandon's credit, you know, uh, he found an opening and, and knocked down a three. I thought Brandon played well tonight. Um, it was good to see him make some shots. You know, obviously, over the last four or five games, he hasn't. He's missed a lot of open ones, but he continues to work every day and, and be in the gym and uh, have confidence with his game. All right, lots of fans in the stands, blackout. Us. You seem to have cracked the code with the students with the concessions, promotions, and other things like that. What's your message to fans um, about tonight and about going down to Huntsville? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I want to thank all the fans, obviously. Um, they were fantastic tonight once we gave them something to cheer for. You know, it, it's hard for whatever was there, 7,000 fans tonight, and, and we aren't playing our best. And, and you know, La Tech was the aggressor, and La Tech was kind of taking it to us. And, and you know, we didn't dig ourselves out of that hole till about, what, five, six minutes left in the game. And then once we did, and I kept telling those guys, I go, guys, give them something to cheer for. And once we did, you know, this place erupted. And, uh, you know, for that last five or six minutes, I thought it was fantastic. But uh, I can't thank the fans enough. Uh, it stinks that, that we, we lost, you know, two games in Diddle. I, I thought we had an opportunity to go undefeated. But... Um, it certainly wasn't for, for lack of fans and lack of students. And uh, we just, you know, we got to keep building upon that, right? And uh, I think that uh, the 7,000 people or so that were here tonight, I think that those guys uh, 
probably enjoyed the game, especially the last five or six minutes, and hopefully they'll come back next year and they'll certainly travel down to Huntsville. It's three hours. It's an easy, easy deal. Huntsville seems like a nice city, um, nice downtown and a nice arena. So, um, but we got to give them a reason to go down there too, right? We got to give them a reason to go down there. I understand that fully. Uh, during that run, I think you guys cut it to one a couple of times. Do you feel like if, if, if you could have got the lead, maybe it might have locked it in a little bit that, that, that resurgence you guys were having? Yeah, I would like to think that if we would have gotten the lead that, you know, I mean, those guys would have tightened up a little bit. But at the end of the day, they made 16 and 17 free throws in the seven, second half. So they made their free throws down the stretch, just like we made our free throws down the stretch in Ruston. So that's a good basketball team. Obviously, them and Sam Houston will compete for the conference title here in a week. And uh, they deserve it. They beat us tonight.